And at this time, we have a special welcome to the former governor of the great place, one of the greatest places I know, and also, I believe, the national basketball champions. <laughs> Thank you, Ned. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this special reunion dinner of uh, classes who refuse to stop thinking about fishermen. And Ned mentioned Fairfax Hall stories. I'm sure for those of you who came here on occasion, uh, you have your own stories. So let me tell you mine briefly. In outside in the lobby, off to the side, there is a what I guess would be called a dating room. You met your date in the lobby, you went into the room and lo and behold for the first time you are surprised to find that the door to the dating room has a glass window that it's circular <laughs> and like Colonel Young Mrs. Bruce would always be looking through the glass <laughs> if you got too close if you were holding hands you were in trouble <laughs> so fast forward about 30 years and I was running for office. And I was in a little place called Pulaski down Interstate 81, and a, working the crowd, a large gathering of people. And this lady came up to me and with a frown on her face said, I bet you don't recognize me. And I said, Mrs. Bruce, it's always good to see you. <laughs> Better here than at Fairfax Hall. <laughs> I don't know about other stories, but that's as wild as mine went, was recognizing that you could get in trouble if you ever crossed paths with Mrs. Bruce. So I want to welcome all of you here. It's a wonderful time to convene for dinner, to enjoy good food, to tell tall tales, even about Fairfax Hall, and to hear from a distinguished speaker. I think it's fair to say that we owe a debt of gratitude to Ned Clements, class of 1951. <clears throat> he was the one who developed the idea of a legacy dinner. For those alumni who've celebrated their 50th class reunion and still want to come back year after year after year. When the idea was launched, some thought it was a gathering for a bunch of old people. Um, not so, said Ned, because a person is not old until one regrets take the place of their dreams and hopes and plans for the future. In your presence here tonight and in years past, make manifest that none of us is old because we have still our hopes, our dreams, our plans for a fisherman's future that is worthy of its past. So welcome all of you young people to what I hope will be a very wonderful reading. It's a very special year for me because it is the 60th reunion of the class of 1959. There were a number of people here tonight, and some are coming tomorrow. Two in particular were unable to make it. Both were my old roommates at Fishery. Kimball Whitmer from Newburyport, Massachusetts, is recovering from a stroke and was in the hospital as late as last week. 
Ed Willard from Raleigh, North Carolina, had family matters that prevented him from being here. So to all of the young people, regardless of your years, I think it's a wonderful thing that we all gather uh, to speak about the school we know, admire, respect, and love. Speaking of age, <clears throat> there is an all-American saying that growing old is mandatory. Growing up is optional. <laughs> As we all remember, fishermen helped us to grow up, uh, to live a life committed to duty, honor, and country. It also taught us the importance of self-discipline, the value of time management, the essence of civility and courtesy, along with the fundamentals of math and science, the importance of history, geography, foreign languages, the benefits of athletics and extracurricular activities, and the value of military training and leadership. We appreciate these things more now than we probably did when we were at Fishman. I mean, who liked getting up at Reveille at the crack of dawn? Who enjoyed putting our rooms in order before we could go to breakfast? How about marching to meals, shining your shoes until one's face could be seen, or marching tours for some always minor infraction uh, who saw a future in all of that? And who could forget the annual GI inspection <laughs> or a weekend cab ride to Fairfax? And who, who went through the 12th grade, could ever forget the rigors and the condolences and the sadness that accommodated our senior English notebooks when we got them back from Colonel Young or his successor? point is this, whatever our memories, we are here because of fishermen. Just as our world decades ago was different from the world a hundred years ago, the world has changed dramatically for fishermen since we were here. Think about it. <clears throat> we live today in a globalized society where time and distance have been telescoped where advancing technologies and rapid communications are changing all the rules. Many of the changes are breathtaking. Some are puzzling, and for some of us, frustrating. If you think about it, our cars have become computers on wheels. Cell phones have more computing power than our astronauts had when they went to the moon and journeyed into space. 85% of all the job losses in this country in the last 10 to 12 years have been due to automation. The use of big data and artificial intelligence will bring more changes in the future than we can now contemplate. And through it all, Fishman lives. But it has not always been easy, nor is it a comfortable way to make a living today. The challenges of cadet and faculty recruitment are real. Financial stresses still endure. And since two-thirds, as I understand it, two-thirds of the school's revenues come from cadet tuition, think about a downturn in the economy or the re-emergence re of anti-military feelings in the country. And yet, as I understand it, in any given year, only 10% of the alumni give back to the school financially. 10%. Think about the school's obligations, about its fiduciary requirements, about the care and attention required for the students, the cadets. Buildings and grounds must be great, continually maintained. Safety and security must be assured. 
Athletic programs are not cheap. Faculty recruitment and retention are expensive. Debt service is a constant reminder of our obligations. Last year at the Colonel Young Brigade dinner, it was announced by the school that an alumnus had contributed four and a half million dollars <coughs> to build the new field house behind the administration building, for, which we can see tomorrow from the outside, but because of construction activity on the inside, we will not be permitted to enter the building, not unless we have some good lawyers and a field army <coughs> ready to back us up. So alumni are stepping up. We can help Fishburne financially from our homes. We can make annual giving a part of our charitable giving program. We can join the Colonel Young Brigade and provide some significant gifts to the school. We can provide for a major bequest through our wills or our state plan or an insurance policy and even that IRA that you have to start getting rid of when you reach 70 and a half. Your giving to Fishman is more than a gift. It's an investment in Fishman's future, where cash flow is a constant critical fact of life at any moment in time. So in a world of change that those of us could not have imagined 50 years ago, the challenge for Fishman is to stay true to its mission of preparing cadets for their future, not ours, theirs, to continue the emphasis on fundamentals, to think creatively, imaginatively, analytically. We can help our school uh, on that little hill across town. So remember, in such a time and place of change, education must be our surest conviction. We are defined by what we teach. We are shaped by what we learn. And as long as Fishman is here, I'm confident in the future of the school and its graduates and the country. So thank you very much for being here this year. Welcome, enjoy your dinner. There's more to come. Thank you.